get some return. And that is an internal return and that gives us happiness. That gives us happiness. So ultimately we want happiness. Who doesn't want happiness? Who doesn't want happiness? Everyone wants happiness? Yes. yes. Yeah. I have not, I am yet to come across a single person in my life who wants misery in his life. Everyone wants happiness. It is a case of pursuit of happiness. Now different people have manifest their happiness in different ways. Some people want to work in order to be happy. There are others who give up work in order to be happy, like me. There are some who go for shopping to get what they think is happiness. Whereas there are others who give away whatever they have, renounce everything in order to become happy. People do different things, but the goal is same and that is happiness. Happiness, to gain happiness. Now, in the external world, you would like to gain, give me all your attention, huh? In the external world, because I didn't tell you, what I'm telling you is the essence of what I have learned from Aparish over the years. And I have tried to uh, compress it in exactly 22 minutes. Okay? Uh, as I was saying to you, the, in the external world, when uh, we want money or things that we can buy with money, like for example, house or cars, clothes, jewelry, food, or you know, things that come along with the money, like for example, possessions and position, prestige, power. All these are our goals in the external world. And when we go after these goals, and when we achieve these goals, then what happens? We become happy. At least we think that we have become happy. And when we don't get those goals, we become unhappy. 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 Now, this happiness, even if you may label it as happiness, it comes with an expiry date. Because after a while, what happens is that happiness goes away and you are back to square one. So again, you keep some fresh goals and you again start chasing it. But then, are we interested in that kind of happiness? which has an expiry date? No. We want a longer lasting happiness. Happiness that has no expiry date. But the problem is, so long as we go out in the external world in search of happiness, we will get this transitory thing, what we think is happiness. And actually, we call it as pleasure. Because happiness is an andar ka mamla. Ye andar ki baat hai. And so long as we go in the outer world, we will never get happiness. We have to change the direction and go inside. Alexander the not so great did not know poor fellow and he thought that conquering all the different countries he is going to be happy. And he started conquering country after country after country. At 17 years he became the emperor of the world because he thought he had won over everything that was there to be won. And you know something? What he did after he won all the countries he started crying because he didn't know what to do. He said, what now? He didn't get that elusive you happiness. It was like chasing a mirage. Mruga jaya. Yeah? You go close to it and it disappears. He did not get poor fellow and that's why when he died, he kept his hands outside the coffin. He asked his lieutenants to see to it that his hands were kept outside the coffin so that the people of the world know that even when the emperor of emperor, when he dies, he goes empty handed. But I assure you, you give me all your attention and I show you how you, do. you don't have to conquer the whole world. You have to conquer just the inner world. And then you will not have to leave your hands outside the coffin or even when you go to the crematorium, your hands will not show the, the state of your bosom. You will be absolutely a full person. Would you, would you be interested in knowing that? Yes. yes. That we have to know that the search direction has to be inside. 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 The search direction has got to be inwards, not outside. And for this, once we do this, the question comes in our mind that who is this experiencer? Who is experiencing this happiness? or unhappiness. And when this happens, we should know that we are on the right tracks. Because the contemplation of this, our true state, people say that happiness is inside. Okay, then when I contemplate, when I think about this, 
who is the uh, what is my true state where is this happiness then that is the beginning of my spiritual sojourn or my spiritual journey <coughs> so far so good now we know that this world is so huge isn't it this world and i am a part of the manifested world am i not i am a part of the manifested world and the world is so huge now if the world is so huge and we all know that the manifested world has come from the unmanifested because manifested world is not even 4% of the totality the manifested world has come from the unmanifested world the i am a microscopic part of the manifested world so what will be the vastness of that unmanifested world when you try to think about it you feel that your uh, thinking capacity is beyond your thinking capacity such is the vastness of the whole thing and that's why we label it as infinite we come back to the original question so who has created this world who has created this world now when i want to know something about the manifested world what do i use what do i use five senses five senses i use my eyes ears everything five senses one or all of the five senses and get the knowledge that's how we have acquired all the knowledge haven't we yes. right now when i want to know uh, something about my true self my inner self what do i use i find that those five senses are inadequate i find that these five senses are inadequate to give me the knowledge about my inner self my true self in fact five senses are an impediment they are an obstruction to the path for my inner knowledge of the true self now we also know that the five senses report to mind mind, mind. mind. five senses report to the mind and mind is supposed to be the lord and master of the five senses because i don't see through my eyes i don't see through my eyes i see through my mind with the help of my eyes i don't hear with my ears but i see i hear with my mind through the medium of my ears haven't you seen that you are engrossed in watching a tv program and your wife is calling you or sakshi is calling you ajit and you don't even know your ears are listening but your mind is not available and that's why mind is supposed to be the master of all the senses now if i want to conquer the senses i have to conquer the mind, mind. i have i have to conquer the mind and how do i conquer the mind i conquer the mind by making it peaceful and what is it that makes the mind restless thoughts, thoughts. you are right thoughts make the mind restless so when i make the mind peaceful by reducing, reducing the number of the thought waves the ripples caused by the thoughts then the mind is quietened and only when the mind is quietened can i go beyond the mind only then i can go beyond the mind and then experience my true self and my true self is happiness there was a sage who lived in a forest and this sage was a self realized person and one day he was traveling in the forest and suddenly he saw a precious stone and he knew that this is indeed a precious stone though it did not have much value for him because he was a self he had experienced the ultimate that stone didn't have but he knew that if this stone is in the right hands then it can be used for the good of many people so he picked up that precious stone and he went to the king and he offered that stone precious stone to the king the king was a connoisseur and he knew the worth of that stone but the moment he saw that stone and the ease with which the sage was giving it to him with no strings attached he said that if the sage can give over this precious stone with such ease he must be having something more precious than this stone fair enough yes. and he lay prostrate in front of the sage that no sooner he did that king did that sage also lay prostrate in front of the king so the king got almost offended and said sir what are you doing why why are you making a scene out of me why are you prostrating in front of me so the sage asked him the same question the king said sir you are 
you know, such an honorable person, you have renounced the world, you have, uh, you know, this such a precious stone, people would give anything for that and you are just giving it away. You are a renunciate. Well, I appreciate that and that's why I lay prostrate in front of you. The sage said, tell me king, what is more precious, God or this stone? And the king promptly said, God, naturally. She so said, I have renounced only that precious stone, but you have renounced God. So you are even a more elevated renunciate than me. I have renounced the lower thing. You have renounced the higher thing. So who is better renunciate? Huh? You, you have renounced the most precious thing. And that's why I lay prostrate in front of you. The king understood his folly. And he uh, asked for forgiveness. And since that day he started following the sage. And the king reached great heights of glory by realizing his inner happiness. So when we come back to happiness. happiness. And now that we know that to get that kind of permanent happiness, we don't have to go in the outer world. We don't have to go in the outer world, we have to go in the inner, inner world. world. And for this again we have to know the nature of the the transient nature of the world in which we live. And what do I mean that by the transient nature of the world? We have to understand that we have to, uh, from Operation talks, we have heard about awakening and purgation and illumination and unification. These are all stages of growing spiritually. First you awaken that there is something known as the higher spiritual dimension. Then when we give away our attachments and possessions, Give away means you don't have to donate, but have a trusty, a relationship of a trusty towards your things. That these are, you have been made a trust, you have been trusted with these things, so take care. Don't spoil them, but at the same time don't be attached and positive about them. So, to experience that happiness, we have to adopt this kind of trusteeship relationship with all the things that we consider as our possessions. We have to consider ourselves like the travelers. You know what the traveler does, Preeti? The travelers, they go to a hotel uh, and after staying overnight, next morning, they move away to their next destination. So similarly, we must know that we are travelers here and after a while, after spending a few decades over here, we too will be moving from this body to somewhere else. We are not going to take anything along with us because we, in the first place, we never came with anything. Did we come? No. So we are not going to take anything. And once we understand this, internalize this, and understand it thoroughly, then we will not be unhappy about losing the things uh, once we depart from here. This is a very important fact. So far so good? Yes. We first went <coughs> internally instead of going externally. Hi Mohan. Hi. First we went internally instead of externally. Then I said let's have a trusty relationship. I also through the medium of the sage story I told you that the most precious thing, the happiness is within our bosom and now I am take, taking a slight detour. We have to understand that the whole show that we see is running on a principle of energy dynamics. Energy dynamics. Our human body consists of 100 trillion cells. Each of these 100 trillion cells has 100 trillion atoms. Each cell of the body has 100 trillion atoms and each of these 100 trillion atoms has in the center the nucleus and surrounded by the electron. The nucleus has proton and neutron and if you go inside, the quantum physicists have gone inside these protons and neutrons and they have found three quarks. And when you go inside the quarks, then they found a string of energy, vibration, purja. So that is the basis of the whole world creation. And that's what Nandev said, even though there was no electron microscope. This self-realized soul, Mauli Nandev, he said that in his Pasayadan, Duritan chaiti mira dao, Vishwasva dharma suriye pao, Joje vanchil tote laho, pranijar. That is, let the darkness, timid is darkness, let the darkness go from the minds of the ignorant people. Let them understand that the substratum of the whole phenomenon of existence is this energy vibration. 
and once they understand Surya is not Surya, Surya is the photonic particle of Surya, the smallest sub, uh, quantum particle, Surya. And once we understand this, then ask and you shall receive. Whatever you want will be given to you. Our rishis also, other rishis also, they realize the same thing, that the whole thing is this energy, the substratum of the ex existence. What is going through you, through me, through all of us, is that same energy. This energy is indivisible. It's not separate for you and separate for her and separate for me. It's the same energy, outside as well as inside. And the rishis found out that this energy, which is the substratum, they gave it a name, and that name is that name is God. That name is God. The name for that totality, that energy is GOD God. Now, so far so good. We have come to understand that, yeah, because now this energy, we have understood that this energy that is outside in this sea, energy will be in different forms. But when we talk about God, we are talking about the primal energy from which all the energies come. Like for example, all the different things, dhana, huh? uh, lakshmi, this is a kind of attribute of that totality. Its vibration is different. Rupa is another attribute. Music is another attribute. And all of them have different vibration, but there is a primal energy. Understand from which all the others come out. We have, we have got to understand this. Now, once we have understood this, that the in the outside world here is a, Radio wave, if you have a radio, I have a small little radio in my earphone, I can tune in. But can you see the radio wave? No. If we have a small TV, we can Dhani, give, ah, come here, come here and sit. Come here. Come here and sit. First was, first was, you have to come. If I have a small TV, then what will happen in our cell phones also we have TV and we can say, come here please. Now Mohan Sarasranama is his name. Then you can see the TV picture, but you don't see those television waves. Yeah. We use our phones with what waves? Microwaves. With microwaves, but you don't see them. There are the color spectrum waves over here. We pure. There are infrared, ultraviolet, the cosmic rays, the gamma rays, the X-rays, everything is there, but our visibility spectrum is so narrow that we see only we pure. Violet, indigo, blue. Yellow, orange, red. That's all our spectrum is. Understand? Now having known that this God vibration is outside and it is inside also, we are reflections of who? We are reflection of God. In fact, we are God himself. It's not only uh, Sri Sri or Sri Ra or Sri Ravan or Sri. No, everyone is a reflection of God. Nothing more and nothing less. But what makes us feel small is our small little ego that says you are insignificant. You are just a, a, a tiny speck, in a, a tiny mortal in this thing what we call, call as a body. Understand? And when we understand our identity with that universal energy, that totality, when we realize that we can feel that universal energy if we make ourselves pure with the steps that I have shown. Then we, we know that we can realize our oneness with that totality, our oneness with that ultimate reality, our oneness with that universal energy. You may call it, give it any name, like uh, Deepak Chopra calls it the field of pure potentiality. You, you can give it any name, Paramatman, Anatman, or whatever. But ultimately, it is this energy. For this, to experience this, we have got to pray. And pray with total faith. When I say total faith, it has got to be faith where there is no doubt. Because doubt, one speck of doubt, and the faith is neutralized. So we have got to pray with total faith, not for ourselves, but for others. Friends, and foes alike. And when we can do this, we'll find out that that universal energy is the, is the energy that is creating all the miracles in our life. 
that universal energy is responsible for helping us to make do things which look seemingly impossible. People say you can't do that. But you see that people they are doing those impossible things. It's not these people who are doing, but they have made themselves as conducible uh, instruments in the hands of that universal energy, that totality. So far so good? Yes. Now, we have come to the last point, and the last point is that we want to experience God. We don't have to go outside. We know that God is sitting inside us, and we have to find it out. Like, uh, uh, who is that uh, Sherlock Holmes? Who done it? So we have to go in search of God in inward direction. If we, when we contemplate on this, who am I, where I have come from, where am I going, we'll find that this God energy will slowly start filling him in bits and pieces initially. Yeah? And the spark suddenly comes, you may call it illumination. And then we realize that this totality, this universal energy loves us, man. This totality is showering upon us so many goodies, things that we need. I said need, not want. Just imagine when we are conceived in the mother's womb from that one sperm of the father and one ovum of the mother, the zygote was formed or blastocyst we call and from that one cell, this structure of 100 trillion cells. How did you have to use your intelligence? Whereas even to write A, I have to use my intelligence, don't I? So what is that intelligence that has done all this? That is our benefactor. That is the providence that is providing us all those things. Do you understand? When I was born, before I was born, mother was ready with the milk in her breast. And that first breast milk that came out had all the uh, uh, antibodies. So that I, because my antigen, my antibody production is not up to the mark at that time, God has provided us with ready-made antibodies from the mother's will. It's known as colostrum. And then, no sooner I cried, the air went inside. Not one day so far it went that there, I was told that there's no air for you today. Not one day it happened that I was not provided water or food or whatever I needed for my existence. And that's why we say, even the bird in the air has a worm for it, reserved. And that worm will have something else reserved for it. But what prevents us from knowing all this, David, is that we want more. I didn't say need now, I said we want more. And that is because of our greed. Greed. There is a, you know, there is enough for our need, but there is not enough for our greed. 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 There is not enough for our greed. This, this greed says that I don't have this, I don't have that, we concentrate on what we don't have. Whereas we don't look at what we have already got. Aren't we like that small little girl who has been given the Cadbury chocolates right from the time, day she was, uh, you know, a toddler, and she is just taking the chocolates and eating, not bothering even once to look behind and see who is providing these chocolates. We are exactly like that small little girl. We are taking that this is our right. Fundamental human right, water, huh? Sab kuch, red, roti, kapda, makan, hawa, oxygen, sab kuch hona mukta hai. Mera right hai. Aray, but who is the provider? The providence that is providing us all these things, that is the benefactor, the universal energy. Now once, because of the greed, we get, we experience the separation from that totality. And once that separation comes, then fearfulness comes. We are afraid. You don't know. What, what is causing that fearfulness? But it's that separation from the totality energy that causes that fearfulness. And you know, an empty mind is a devil's workshop. Likewise, once we have made ourselves a receptacle for these negativities, then one will bring all its relations. Fear, greed, shame, hatred, one-upmanship, uh, uh, selfishness, jealousy, doubt. Everything will come and make its home inside you. And all these negativities will create a smoke screen between our true self and myself. And once this smoke screen is created, we feel alienated from our true source and we live in a sham world, not for what we were created in the first place. So what do we have to do? As uh, Thakur Ramakrishna Paramahasa, the guru of our hero, 
Swami Vivekananda, he said, Lajja Grina Bhai Tin Thakte Noai. That is, wherever there is Lajja, shame, Grina, hatred, and Bhai, that is fear. Wherever there is shame, hatred, and fear, these three are the biggest obstacles to realizing God, to realizing ourselves. And that's why we have to push all these negativities away. Push all these negativities away from us so that we can again attune ourselves to that totality which is already present in us. And when we can do that, then we'll see that now I don't have to be ashamed of anything from anybody. I don't have to be ashamed of anything. I don't have to prove anything to anyone. I have nothing to hide, nothing to gain. I'm totally deconditioned. I'm totally deconditioned. And when I say deconditioned, that means my faith is in its right place. My faith is in its right place. And when this happens, then we see that I have just love for everyone and everything and every being. And when I experience that state of love, which is a state of noun, not a verb, that I am love myself because I have made myself so pure. And when this happens, we will see to it that we become ananda, bliss, which is our true nature. Tukaram said so many centuries back, he said, ananda te dohi, ananda taranda. That is, once you become ananda, bliss, all around you is, as I said, is all the matter of vibration. So what comes out of you is vibration of ananda, the high vibration. The misery vibrations are low vibrations. And it's like attracts like. So high vibration will attract only high vibrations and you'll have all anandi people. The people, circumstances, events all around you will be that of ananda. Tukaram also said, Mana karare prasanna sarva siddhi se karana. Keep yourself absolutely happy and that you can do by making yourself peaceful. Because the other name for happiness is peace. There are the two sides of the same coin. Unless there is peace, there is no happiness. Swami Chinmanda said, he said, I never experienced Kundalini Jagruthone. He asked his teacher, Swami Shiva, uh, uh, Tapavananda, and Tapavananda said, have you seen me uh, in that, uh, uh, saying that I have my Kundalini Jagruthone, but these are the self-realized souls. He said, what people call as Kundalini Jagruthone, it is, to experience that spurt of happiness that comes within. Because when you have experienced total peace, there are those jets of happiness coming from within you. And that is what people may give you different names. No harm in calling it Kundalini Jagrathona, but what happens? I am talking about pure science. And scientifically, what happens in that state of Kundalini Jagrathona is you are experiencing happiness inside each and every uh, cell and atom of your body. During Namdev's time, there was no electron microscope and yet he described Anu and Renu, atom and molecule. How you must have done? Because once you do that, once you are in that stage, nothing is unknown to you. This grosser, grosser science is absolutely a hell, hell for you. Finally, I say what Tukaram said. He said, Tuza he tuja pashi, paritu zaga chuklashi. That is, happiness is always yours, it's your birthright. Just as Swaraja is your birthright, happiness is also your birthright. But you have just missed a little bit instead of looking inside. Most of us are looking, in, looking for it outside. And the day we start the search inwards, then, as Jesus said, Ask and you shall receive. Knock and it shall be opened for you. And seek and you shall find. But for that, first, you have to seek the kingdom of God within within you, not outside. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and the rest shall be added unto you. Thank you, my friends. Thank you. That was good. Thank you. Thank wow, you. wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow. Ah. Mahabbat na hoti to gazal kaun kecha. Mahabbat na hoti, love, we talked about love. Uh, in fact, the very pronunciation of love was taught to me by Aparish. He said, Dekha, tera mistake nahi, tu varna karam medium sa hai. So you say five, I, though I have never said five, but still I 
how unconsciously consider Guru. So similarly, Lao, I say. So he said, Lao. So <laughs> he said, there are, there's something known as liptith. Liptith. Work is a liptith. So you have to say, love. Love. Lip and tith. Love. Love. Five. Five. So, so I'm grateful to him in so many ways, you know, because he goes to such extents to see to it that you are on the right path. So, mahabbat na hoti, to gazar kaun kehta? Mahabbat na hoti, to gazar kaun kehta? Aray, kichad mein khile huye ful ko kamal kaun kehta? Kichad mein khile huye ful ko kamal kaun kehta? Pyaar mahabbat to kudrat ka ek karishma hai. Pyaar mahabbat to kudrat ka ek karishma hai. Varna, lash ke ghar ko taj mahal kaun kehta? It's time for talk to inform competition and talk to inform competition. We have uh, the participants list over here.